want to ask us uh, this evening, uh, which side of the cross are you on? Which side of the cross of the Lord Jesus Christ are you on? Luke 23 verses 32 to 34 And there were also two other malefactors led with him, that's the Lord Jesus Christ, to be put to death. Now malefactors means criminals. So the man on the left and the man on the right of the Lord Jesus Christ, they were criminals. But the Lord Jesus Christ is not a criminal. But he was the one that was dying on the cross for your sin and mine. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. So the Lord Jesus Christ was there and he was dying for your sin and mine. You and I have, who have sinned against God, broken the commandments of the Lord, we're in big trouble with God because we're sinners. For the wages of sin is death. That's why we have physical death upon the earth. But you and I are dead spiritually as far as God is concerned. This is why we need to be born again. We need to have the new birth. We need to be born from above, born into God's family through faith in the Son of God, the Lord Jesus Christ. So again, this message, which side of the cross are you on? Which side of the cross of the Lord Jesus Christ are you on? And there were also two other malefactors, malefactors, criminals in other words, led with him, that's the Lord Jesus, to be put to death. And when they were come to a place which is called, to the place which is called Calvary, there they crucified him. And the malefactors, one on the right hand, and the other on the left. Then said Jesus, Father forgive them, for they know not what they do. And they parted his raiment and cast lots. In other words, they parted his clothes and they gambled for his clothes. What a terrible thing to do. Gambled for the clothes of the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of God, the one who created all things. You see, God created all things by Jesus Christ. And so the Lord Jesus Christ being the creator of the universe, here he's becoming the saviour, or he is the saviour. And he's dying on the cross of Calvary for you and for me. Yes, they nailed him to that cross because of your sin and mine. So one on the right hand and the other on the left. Then said Jesus, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. They parted his raiment and cast lots. So gambled for his clothes, and the people stood beholding, and the rulers also with them derided him, saying, He saved others. Let him save himself, if he be Christ, if, no, if he's God's anointed, if he's uh, the Messiah. Let him save himself. He saved other people. Why can't he save himself, in other words? The point is this, the Lord Jesus Christ... Oh, uh, yeah, I have not seen. It's about, about ten past uh, six. Yeah. Ten past six. The way to heaven? What? Not the way to heaven? Oh, I don't believe we believe it. I can't see him. I can't see him. So you won't believe? What? You, won't, you can't see him, so you won't believe? All the rapists is brought in the world. All the, all the, you know what I mean? You can't have good and bad. It's just not good. Well, can you see the wind? I can, I can feel the wind. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> God is out there. God wants to save your soul. Yeah. yeah, I've already got one, man. Yeah. Yes, and they, uh, they, he said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do, and they parted his raiment and cast lots. And the people stood beholding, and the rulers also with them derided him, saying, He saved others, let him save himself, if he be Christ, the chosen of God. And the soldiers also mocked him, coming to him and offering him vinegar. And saying, If thou be the king of the Jews, save thyself. They're questioning him. They're questioning the fact that he is actually the king of the Jews. But he is the king of the Jews. In fact, he's the king of kings and lord of lords. And every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is lord to the glory of God the Father. But God wants you to come to the Lord Jesus Christ 
this afternoon, my friend, in repentance toward God, that is, a change of mind, simply agree with God that you are a sinner and put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and God promises you everlasting life. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Yes, and the superscription also was written over him in letters of Greek and Latin and Hebrew. This is the king of the Jews. One of the malefactors, one of the criminals, in other words, which were hanged round on him, saying, If thou be Christ, save thyself and us. He was just worried about his own skin. He wanted to be saved. He wanted to be released from this terrible, torturous death of crucifixion. It was a terrible uh, sort of a death. You know, being pierced through the hands and the feet, being nailed to a cross, and not being able to breathe. It's a, it's a terrible sort of a form of death. But the point is this, the other two deserved to die like that, but the Lord Jesus Christ did not deserve to die like that. But he died like that out of love for you and for me. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He that believeth on him, that is on Jesus Christ, is not condemned. But he that believeth not, is condemned already because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. The question is, have you believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God? Are you a child of God? Have you put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ? Yes, but the other answering rebuked him. In other words, the other man that was the other side of the cross, he told him off. That's what rebuking means. It means to tell them off. Yes, um, saying, Thus not thou fear God, seeing thou art in the same condemnation, and we indeed justly. For we receive the due reward of our deeds. In other words, we're getting what we deserve. We're dying for our sin. Being crucified for our sin. It says here, but this man, meaning the Lord Jesus Christ, hath done nothing amiss. That means nothing out of place. How can the Lord Jesus Christ do anything out of place? How can he do anything wrong? How can he sin when he's God? One of his titles is Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. God came down in the person of the Lord Jesus Christ who is clothed with humanity. Sinless humanity. But in that body, he by the grace of God should taste death for every man upon the cross. And he said unto Jesus, Lord, remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. And Jesus said unto him, Verily or truly I say unto thee, Today shalt thou be with me in paradise. So back to verse 33. And when they were come to the place which is called Calvary. Now Calvary is Latin, uh, Golgotha is Aramaic. Luke is the only gospel that calls it Calvary. Matthew, Mark and John call it Golgotha. It means the place of a skull or the hill of execution. Crucifixion was invented by the Persians in 300 to 400 BC. Golgotha is near the city, just under one kilometre or half a mile from Jerusalem. Hebrews 13 verse 12 says, Wherefore Jesus also, that he might sanctify the people, or set the people apart, uh, sanctify the people with his own blood, suffered without the gate. He was taken outside the city gate of Jerusalem and crucified. They are the criminal on either side of the perfect, only begotten Son of God. Isaiah 53 verse 12 says, uh, the middle of the verse says, He was numbered with the transgressors. Don't forget, this was written 700 odd years before it happened. 
It was prophesied that this would take place about 700 odd years before. That he would be uh, numbered with the transgressors. Verse 34 of Luke 23, Then said Jesus, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. They part his raiment and cast lots. John 19 verses 13 to 15, when Pilate therefore heard that saying, he brought Jesus forth and sat down in the judgment seat in a place that is called the pavement, but in the Hebrew, Gabbatha. And it was the preparation of the Passover and about the sixth hour. And he said unto the Jews, Behold, you are king. But they cried out, Away with him, away with him, crucify him. Pilate said unto them, Shall I crucify your king? The chief priests answered, We have no king but Caesar. The Jews failed to recognize the tr their true king. They failed to recognize the Messiah. That is our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. They had rejected him. They did not recognize him for who he really is. Yes, he's not only the king of Israel, as I said before, he's the king of kings and lord of lords. He's going to rule this world in righteousness and it's going to be an eternal kingdom. There shall be no end to the kingdom of our God and of our Lord Jesus Christ. He's going to rule in righteousness. He's going to rule with a rod of iron. The point is this, God wants to save your soul this afternoon. Will you come to Christ for salvation this afternoon? Will you believe upon him? Put your faith in him. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. As John 1 verse 11 says, he came unto his own, and his own received him not. So his own people had rejected him. You know, he was born a Jew. But the point is this, they thought he was just a regular man. But he is a man and he is God. God manifest in the flesh. He's God as well as a man. He's the man Christ Jesus. And he's also God in a body. God in a body, that's amazing. That could take place. But God came down in the person of Jesus Christ and was clothed with a body, a sinless body. A body that there was no sin in. He knew no sin, did no sin, and in him is no sin. The perfect son of the living God was made sin for us. He knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Which means that if you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, if you put your faith in him, your soul will be saved. But if you don't, your soul will remain in a lost condition, heading down to hell because you have not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. Yes, he came unto his own, and his own received him not. But, verses 12 and 13 says of John chapter 1, But, as many as received him, that is, received Jesus Christ, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name, which were born, not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. This is what we need. We need to be born again. We need to be born from above, born into God's family through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. And that can be yours. This other is used to this message. You can get right with God. Your soul can be saved. That's what God, God wants you to be saved. God is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Repentance being a change of mind. Simply agree with God that you're a sinner and put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and your soul will be saved. Galatians 3.26 says, For ye are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. 
This is how we will be, we'll be born again. By putting our faith in the Son of God, the Lord Jesus Christ. He wants to be your Saviour right now. Will you believe on Him? Will you put your faith alone in Him? The one who to know is life eternal. Eternal life is found not in a man-made religion. Man-made religion will take you down to hell, my friend. There's many thousands and millions of people who are in hell right now burning under our feet because they have not put their faith in the Son of God. They trusted a man-made religion. Maybe they've gone along with their, you know, their parents' religion or their forebears, you know, their relations. Man-made religion will lead to hell, my friend. Only Christ can take you to heaven. And he's the one that you've got to come to know this afternoon. If you want to be in heaven, you'll have to come God's way. And God's way is through the Lord Jesus Christ. There's no other way to get to heaven. Lord Jesus Christ said in John 14 and verse 6, I am the way, not a way. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. So that's the way to heaven. Through the Lord Jesus Christ, my friend. Don't try to get to heaven by doing good things. You'll never make it. Then it's take us down to hell, my friend. You've got to come to Christ to be saved. He's the one who's died on the cross. Christ died for our sins, according to the Scriptures. And he was buried. Praise God, the third day he rose again, according to the Scriptures. He's a living, loving Saviour, my friend. He wants to save you from a long and lost eternity. Eternity is a long time to be wrong, as I often say. You've got to get this right. We get one shot at this life. And if you get it wrong, you'll be in hell. God does not want you to go down to hell, my friend. And that's why I'm coming here this afternoon to give you another opportunity of getting right with God, receiving forgiveness for your sins. And it's all through the finished work of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ, upon the cross. Acts 28, verses 23 and 24, speaking of Paul, and when they had uh, appointed him a day, there came many to him in his lodging, that was where he lived, to whom he expounded and testified the kingdom of God, persuading them concerning Jesus, both out of the law of Moses and out of the prophets from morning till evening. And some believe the things which were spoken, and some believe not. Will you believe on him now and get on the right side of the cross? What was the title of the message? Which side of the cross are you on? Are you on the side of those who are saved? Or are you on the side of those who are lost? Going down to hell because your sins have not been forgiven. God is able to forgive you of all of your sins this hour, my friend. But you've got to come to Christ to receive that salvation. There'll be no salvation apart from the Lord Jesus Christ. He's the only way that we can get to heaven. Neither is there salvation in any other. There is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. You must be saved if you ever hope to be in heaven. The only way of salvation is through the Lord Jesus Christ. That's why the Bible says, He that hath the Son hath life, he that hath not the Son of God hath not life. Do you have the Son of God? Have you put your faith in Him and become a child of God? Well, thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. I appreciate that. If you're interested in this, look me up. YouTube.com forward slash peace by Jesus Christ. God bless you. Have a great night.